Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Today is going to be a really fun class. If you enjoyed the Leprechaun Facts class, you're really going to have a lot of fun with this one. Uh, we are joined again by Heather Human from Love of Learning. Uh, be sure to download the free worksheet so that you can take notes and create your own very own paper robot. I'm going to go ahead and put a link to the freebie uh, that Heather has so graciously provided all of us with so that you guys can follow along. And we also have a link to the presentation. So if you want to do this again later, you can. Yes, and I recommend judiciously using your pause button because that is going to be key regardless of when you are watching this, <laughs> just in case I go too fast. And also, for whatever reason, the comments are a little delayed sometimes, so um, I don't want to ruin things for you by going too fast. So feel free to hit pause throughout all of this. <laughs> so uh, to give you guys an what we're going to be doing. Heather is going to show us a patent picture of bizarre but real inventions throughout history, and you'll get to guess the intended purpose of each invention before the big reveal. Be prepared to laugh because the answers are typically almost as hilarious as the real answer. So once the class is over, she will be offering everyone a special discount on her invention resources, good for 24 hours only. So please let us know if you are going to be joining us live or on the replay by commenting where you're joining us from and who's with you. I'm here in the very cold North Idaho. Heather, where are you joining us from? I am in Maryland. It is not cold. <laughs> <laughs> not cold, although dry today. So that is that is something new. We've had some rain recently and we have more rain coming, but it's dry. So all, all is well here in, here in Maryland. <laughs> we've got uh, Marion joining us and Brian joining us. It looks like we've got Brian from Vancouver, BC. We've got Amy from Wisconsin, Susan from, with, in New Jersey with two of her kids, six and nine. Thanks everyone <laughs> for joining us. Yes, good to have you. Um, so as Amelia said, I'm going to be talking about some very wacky inventions that were actually approved patents, not all of them still in existence. In fact, most definitely not. Um, this is a class that I taught last summer, actually, and I've boiled it down into one one trivia session. Um, I chose all of my favorites. So hopefully you guys will will have some fun trying to guess what each one is because it is definitely not always obvious. I posted <laughs> a little um, a little example, one that's not included in, in tonight's presentation, but I, I posted a little example and there were some correct answers. Although I have to say, um, all right, so go, first of all, go check out the picture. If you haven't already, it's, it's in the event discussion section. Mm -hmm. um, it is actually an activity belt for when you are riding a bike and your kid is sitting in like the, that seat in the bike in the back. I don't even know if that's still a thing. It definitely was when I was young. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'd want, <laughs> <laughs> want to use this product. <laughs> It had all sorts of things that like baby could be pulling on and honking. And I don't know, man, I, I wouldn't want that in the backseat of my car, let alone attached to me. So, um, but good for you guys. I, that was definitely a bit more of an obvious one. I'm, I'm hoping that like the leprechaun trivia class, um, uh, that these will be a little bit trickier and, um, yeah, that much more fun as a result. So without further ado, um, yeah, get your typing fingers ready because I cannot wait to hear um, your thoughts on each of these. Like last time, we're going to have an honors-based point system. You don't have to keep score if you don't want to. Some people like it, some people don't. This is entirely up to you. Um, but there's a total of 7,500 points on the board, and that is 
that is how many you could possibly earn if you got them all right. I broke this down into different time periods of when the patents were actually approved. You can see there's a little bit of overlap there. I had I had two from 96 and it just didn't didn't work out <laughs> like perfect breakdowns of of five and all of that. And I wasn't willing to part with one of them. So um, there's a little bit of an overlap there. But otherwise, these are the basic groups. You can see this goes all the way up to 2006. So our last wacky invention was as recent as 2006, although your kids probably feel like that was 100 years ago. Uh, surprisingly, no. Um, <laughs> hi to uh, kids in North Carolina. Where can you find the link to the utility belt? Um, yeah, so in the event, um, the discussion section, I posted it. I, I don't know, Amelia, if you're able to direct them more than that. Yeah, perfect. Okay. All right. So, oh, and then there's also the robot craft that I included. You can download that for free. That is linked to in the event, the event description. Feel free to be keeping the little hands busy, um, cutting and coloring and whatnot um, throughout class. I realize that a robot is kind of a um a gimme in terms of an invention. It was the best I could come up with in terms of um, something related to inventions, but I also included writing sheets in there. So you can describe exactly what your robot does. That's I think where the wackiness can come in um, because there are only so many robot parts I could provide to you, but that doesn't mean your robot can't do some really funny things. So here Thank we you. go. <laughs> Jessica, thank you for joining us today. It looks Hi. like they're from Georgia. We got Liv from Australia, and we've got, uh, yeah, we've got three of them uh, joining us in Australia. So thank you guys so much for joining us. If you guys are all ready to get started, we should begin. Yeah, let's do this. Um, so on each slide, like Amelia said, I am going to click on this, uh, <laughs> this magnifying glass and we are going to look at what the patent image looks like. Uh, not sure how familiar you are <laughs> with, the, with the patent process. Um, I, I won't bore you with too many details, but you have to provide sketches of what the product will look like amongst many other things. This is like an entire profession is writing, writing patents. Um, but each of the images I supply are real patents. I got them from the patent office. <laughs> um, not making any of these up or, or I'm not that creative. So, um, so this is a real patent image. And I would love to hear what you think this is and what you think it does. Sneeze guard. Okay. Fair guess. All right. Any other guesses? A mask? I know, right? That's all uh, we think about now. Everything's a mask. <laughs> I feel like it has something to do with a mustache. I'm a not mustache sure. Mustache mask? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> hey, <Lee. laughs> a, lip a lip warmer. warmer. Okay. <laughs> also interesting. <laughs> um, I'll let a few more guesses come. Something to put in your shoe. All right. Different. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. All right. So if you want to have further guesses, might want to hit pause um, because I am going to close the window now and tell you what this actually is. So this is from 1876 because this is our first one. And the official title, and this is how they spelled it then this is not me like making typos um, but improvement in mustache guards is what this was um, so at the time really big mustaches were the thing <laughs> they were in vogue as they say um, and a whole bunch of food was like getting caught in them this was this was a really <laughs> big problem in 1876 so a cloth mustache shield was invented just to cover the mustache to keep to keep it all all pretty and clean while one was eating so that is what the, a fake mustache <laughs> the mustache was real um it just needed something to cover it up while um while they were eating so <laughs> so that is that interestingly 
Many mustache guards have been invented, especially around that period. I just happened to pick this one, but not the first and only. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. All right. So let's see what our next one is here. All right. So that was for 100 points. I forgot that we're, we're doing points here too, in case you want to, don't have to. All right. This is for 200 points. And these are in no certain order, by the way, other than Actually, I should say they are in certain order. In terms of points, it's not like Jeopardy where it gets harder or something. Um, I'm doing it in date order. So here you go. All right. So this one is from 1879. What do we think this is? This is actually one of my favorites. I remember the the long discussion my my students and I had about this and a, what it is, and B, it's many, many flaws. <laughs> All right. So what do we think this one is? <laughs> if anyone gets this, I will be, I will be super impressed. I just so happen to, I believe, actually know what this one is because it was featured in a um, sci-fi cover for oh, well, see, anthology. That's so I, I, I'm not going to say, <laughs> but I think I know what it is because... <laughs> Yeah, that, uh, then definitely don't say. <laughs> <laughs> all right, an umbrella, a parachute for the head, a parachute for all. A portable umbrella, parachute, <laughs> wooden umbrella. That's another one. Yeah, I haven't gotten that that answer through yet. A parachute. Is it a parachute just in case? <laughs> <laughs> it just explodes out of the head because you never know. All right, I'll give it another second before we're revealing here okay <laughs> for falling objects that's fair that's fair um <laughs> a wind go. catcher to help you fly i like the these ideas you do not hold. <laughs> <laughs> because who wants to hold their umbrella um all right so uh not any of those things this was a fire escape um I, beyond words, cannot really say all the different ways this this would have been wrong. Um, so you, <laughs> obviously you aren't like constantly wearing this, right? So picture that your dwelling is on fire. You have to put all of this together and then leap off the building. Um, <laughs> so I, I personally find like your traditional fire escape a wee bit safer. Um, I know, right? So flawed. It's insane. Um, <laughs> we, uh, like I said, the, the students and I were discussing all the different ways that this could possibly go wrong. Honestly, we, we didn't come up with one way where this would have, would have ended well for the user. I don't know what kind of, uh, what kind of testing <laughs> they did, like beta testing. It could not have been much. Is this what you thought it was, by the way, Amelia? No, I didn't. This is oh. what I thought it was. It was very what? similar to uh, a sketch that I had s seen that uh, someone had done of um, walking on, like taking strolls on lakes. Somebody thought that uh, in the Victorian era that they were going, we were going to be able to take uh, strolls on top of water, but by having oh, like because uh, they had like the moon shoes on. Mm -hmm. That is for your your amazing landing. <laughs> <laughs> Assuming that this didn't. I don't know. It kind of looks like it would hang you. I, that's just me. But yeah, like, not... it wouldn't go well. So, but just in case you actually made it to the ground, you could make this nice soft landing with the with the moon shoes. So, <laughs> all right, that's for two hundred points. <laughs> that actually is one of my favorites. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, uh, this early on, this is my all time favorite. I love this one. All right. What is this? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out here. <laughs> I love this one so much. Is there a cage above the person's head? Is that a cage? <laughs> no, it's kind? not. No, no it's not. <laughs> oh, wow. man. I forget what year this is. I'll, I'll talk about it in the next when I actually, no one even has guesses. They're like, what is even happening here? A crib, okay. <laughs> Protect your, <laughs> all right, yeah. 
I feel like it has something to do with the fact that it's attached to like the it looks like a alarm clock on the side of the wall or something. Maybe a clock there. Something for snoring. Yeah. Okay. An alarm clock. An alarm clock above someone's head. All right. So let's say it is an alarm clock. I'm curious what you think this is. Like, <laughs> like this part. <laughs> Okay. Very funny. So winner, winner, chicken dinner. It is an alarm clock that smashes your face. <laughs> it, oh. uh, so I had, I had guesses anywhere from like wet fish to, I, I don't even remember what some of the other guesses were in terms of what is smashing your face, but it's, it's corks, like um, a cork from like a wine bottle or something, but the 60 corks. 60. Like, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like one would wake me, but maybe, maybe the people who use this are much heavier sleepers. I don't know. Um, I mean, I can hear like my daughter walking in the hallway, just like toward yeah. my door, uh, 60 corks to the face in the morning. I feel like is a little overkill. Um, but in case you did not want to use it as an alarm clock, <laughs> this is, just reminds me of Home Alone. It could also be used as a burglar alarm. So, <laughs> you know, multi-purpose. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like some of the, the others. of doing a little too much with one thing. <laughs> I know, right? Although a lot of these are actually multi-purpose. Um, you know, some purposes more practical than the others. Um, all right. So this was from 1882. Oh my gosh. Corks to the face. You can see why that one's my all-time favorite. Although there are some runner-ups, I will say. All right. So let's see what this one is. All right. What do we think? <laughs> what do we think this one is? I feel like it has something to do with like a, like a loom maybe like it's supposed to be like because it I don't know like it <laughs> it's obvious that the swing does something or the swing does, does something, something indeed indeed like yes <laughs> one or the other yeah someone else said a sewing machine a run sewing by machine swinging. okay automatic, automatic swing, swing. uh-huh that honestly would make a heck of a lot more sense than, than what it is. A swing, a swing connected to a chair table. Maybe it swings something from side to side. Okay. All right. Can I look it up, please? <laughs> no, <laughs> no doing a reverse image search. I will tell you in just a second. <laughs> All right. A swing that can push itself. That seems to be the most popular, most popular choice. Um, none of the above. This was a washing machine. Um, so from eight, it was from 1888. Uh, there were lots and lots and lots and lots of iterations of washing machines over the years. Um, and this was one of them. You would swing and let me just go back and bring up the picture so you would swing here whoever this poor girl is I guess it's I don't know some would argue maybe better than actually doing the laundry um but it would it would do the laundry right here and everything would come out all nice here I mean you would still have to like hang dry it or whatever but this is how how it was actually your dog <laughs> you thought you thought it was wrong so you didn't let her type it oh my gosh I love it <laughs> Well, good for your daughter for guessing. I certainly wouldn't have. Um, so like I mentioned before, a lot of these are multi-purpose. So the um, the inventor really made it so anything that could be used by um, a swinging motion mm -hmm. to to generate something else, like you could, in theory, generate electricity or something with this. Um, so if it's something that could be turned in that motion, you could use this for. So it didn't have to be a washing machine. That was just the original, the original intent. All right. So that was I for, think I personally think that that one's pretty cool. That one should have actually made it. That one that I could see <laughs> being useful. <laughs> just swinging instead of actually doing the laundry. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I can see that one though. <laughs> All right. What do we think about this one? 
This is for 500. This one is a tough one. I feel like this legit deserves a 500. <laughs> oh my. Another one that I will be very surprised if, if anyone gets. And if anyone's daughter thinks they know, it's okay to type it. <laughs> Like, I feel like maybe it's like supposed to be like a massage tool or something. Mm. Yeah. I could what see that. in the world? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Body armor. Okay. Yeah. I could definitely see that. An exercise tool. Hmm. Kind of close. Kind of close. How's that a pants dresser? <laughs> <laughs> Underwear made out of a different material. <laughs> oh my God. Restraints. I don't think I've included anything quite so dark in, in, in this. Um, okay. So exerciser is the closest guess, not accurate, but closest. So this was actually a device to teach swimming. Apparently there in 1896, there were not enough swimming instructors. And so what they would do is put people in this device and have a single instructor um, help them get in. And then it would actually force them to do the motions of whatever the type of swimming that they were teaching, you know, the breaststroke, what have you. And it would help you get those motions exactly right. Um, at least again, in theory, um, but that's what this is. Um, so it, it did sort of the job of an instructor for them. <laughs> A bone maker. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. So how... Uh, frightening looking, but how great would it be to learn how to swim where you don't need an instructor and you don't need to have like a fear of drowning? I actually think that this could be somewhat useful uh, these days, especially since at least around here, swim lessons are so hard to get. Ours, um, ours like sell out in seconds, literally, um, ever since COVID hit. So, all right. <laughs> Okay, what about this one? This is from 1896. What might this be? What the wow? My mom <laughs> said that. <laughs> what is happening in this one? Yeah, my best guess again is what someone else said. They were, it's uh, Brian head, said head massager. Head That's massager. My guess. <laughs> What does everybody else think? To protect your head. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's Elizabeth. Sarah <laughs> says automatic hair, head scratcher. A fake <laughs> brain. <laughs> uh, Marion said uh, a hat to read people's minds. All fair guesses. All fair guesses. <laughs> Time machine. Mind reader. <laughs> an air cooling hat Ooh, I like that one although the scalp massager oh my gosh anyone who's ever had a scalp massage it's the greatest part of getting your hair cut <laughs> all right so this is none of those things um those were all super <laughs> light zapper <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, no. So this, this was saluting. Um, this was for saluting. Uh, <laughs> so instead of, you know, tipping, tipping your cap um, to someone, it did it for you. Um, and <laughs> once, once it went forward and like did the salute, you had to bring it back and like rewind it up again, <laughs> which frankly, I don't know. That sounds like a lot more effort lot than more just than saluting. Just <laughs> I just like, why? <laughs> I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, you guys saw the picture. That seems unnecessarily complicated on a lot of levels instead of just tipping your cap. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. yeah. So, all right. So, um, so for this, it's, it's tipping your cap, um, to someone. So not the saluting like this, but but tipping, tipping your, your cap to somebody. Um, 
I'm trying to think. <laughs> the kind of like the uh, the Northwest <laughs> nod over here. We have that you see someone, you just nod at them. Yes, you know, exactly. Like An acknowledgement I'm... of <laughs> of the other exactly. person, um, or a thank you, um, is probably the best way uh, to describe it. But either way, like using your hands feels less onerous. But that's just me. Um, hopefully, that definition was was good for you. Um, all right. So next one. What do we got here? Now, this looks at first very similar to our mustache guard. I mean, after all, he has a mustache. This is not a mustache guard. I'm just going to throw that out there right now. No mustache guards happening right here. <laughs> what do we think? <laughs> Any, a whistle. Oh, I like that guess. I like that guess. I just... From teeth. grinding your teeth, a mouth guard. Yeah. I At have least the paint is them. blue, so I'm just letting everyone else guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I just can't imagine working in the patent office and looking at these going like, it's supposed to do what now? I know. Well, approved. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the part I can't understand. Like, it's one thing to get, like, a crazy idea in front of you. It's another thing to be like, yeah. That seems that, that seems good. rational. Let's let's stamp this approved and let's let them let's let them go out and put this in the world. A breathing device, a snore muter, early braces, anti snoring device. All right, let's see what this one is. You guys are correct on the mm -hmm. snoring stuff. So a lot of people got that one. A lot of people got that one. I'm really surprised. It looks like a, a horse bit to me. Mm -hmm. Um, now the other part, I think that at least through me, when I first saw this is dude's eyes are open. I don't know. Are yeah. many people snoring with the eyes open? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, that's exactly it. So when you were asleep, um, you, the air would go through the openings instead. You have to like bite down on this hard metal thing, which again, also, <laughs> <laughs> also seems horrible. Um, but anyway, so that um that is how how that worked so <laughs> yes so not even snore muter this this apparently supposedly was the real deal and actually stopped stopped the snoring sound at least um although again i have to say like that uh, that looked uncomfortable all right what about this one chicken glasses <laughs> <laughs> and why might one need chicken glasses <laughs> i have no idea that was a suffocator the previous one i assume <laughs> yeah i blockers oh, to keep not, the chicken yeah. calm i wonder if this person has chickens well i've heard with pheasants you have to have they have to have eye blockers all the male ones just so they're <laughs> far far chicken. Chicken. best answer yet i like that one the chicken is blind maybe that sounds so the chicken can see oh maybe it's an egg catcher is what they're saying or a secret camera mm -hmm. i like that like um i've seen these nature shows where they have um essentially like a robot that looks like the animal but is going around mm -hmm. and actually like a gopro um, makes them blind on purpose so they don't get scared. What, like, to their execution? <laughs> like, why? I'm, I'm curious why they're being scared, but okay. <laughs> My depending answer on, yeah, depending on the breed, they can be either flighty or just pretty chill. I don't know much about chickens, and maybe that's why this one was harder for me. Um, so it is an eye protector for chickens. Um, so kind oh. of, it doesn't keep them calm, but apparently they can get very nasty toward each other, um, mm -hmm. at pecking each other's eyes out. Um, now, knowing that about chickens now, I'm wondering how they got the glasses on <laughs> like, <laughs> like if they're injuring each other without the glasses i doubt they're super chill while you attach something to their face i don't know <laughs> you wouldn't be able to get it on a rooster that's for sure I, I i yeah i'm wondering i i don't know the mechanics of getting it on 
I know, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Some pretty good guesses for that one. Okay. I don't even didn't even say what year that one was, but maybe someone's You're clicking on the wrong thing. Sorry. No one look. All right. This is my second all-time favorite. So hopefully no one saw the answer. Clicked on the wrong thing. This is my second all-time favorite. All right. So what do we think this is? I love this mm, picture. Sticky shoes. <laughs> <laughs> this picture is downright frightening for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it's like, what, it, all right, this guy maybe, but what is happening with this guy? And why are neither of them wearing clothes? It's very <laughs> confusing. <laughs> Monkey bars. <laughs> A ladder for exercising. Yeah. Yeah, you can go like all the way around, just keep going. Mm -hmm. I could see that. Rather than like laps in the park, you just keep going around this ladder. A, a weird ladder. <laughs> teeter totter. <laughs> yeah, like a real weird teeter totter. <laughs> a shoe, shoe holder. holder. <laughs> yeah, maybe the maybe the people just aren't <laughs> a device for holding people above an acid pit. <laughs> <laughs> That's like so that very specific. <laughs> That is Somebody's so been watching some cartoons. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> Treadmill. <laughs> All right. Oh, can't believe I accidentally clicked the wrong one. All right. So this was for climbing ladders. Um, now you were supposed to be able to go on either side of the ladder, just like the picture shows. Um, now why you would want to be that lower guy, I have no idea. Um, I'm afraid of heights, so I don't get near ladders anyway. So maybe there is a legit use for being upside down on a ladder. I'm not sure. Um, but this is from 1913 and, um, yeah, it made it possible to be on a ladder regardless of whether you were upright or or under so yes <laughs> who knew all right let's see what the next one is i'm gonna click on the right button this time this must be from 1920 since it is 500 points um the last one of the category hopefully i don't go over i'm trying to speed up a little bit all right what do we think this is Anybody have guesses? I think it's a hat of some kind. Okay. A hat of some kind. Yeah. But I'm a not hair sure. designer. Okay. Mm -hmm. A shattered disc. <laughs> Head measurer. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hair cutting. Hair cutting device. Okay. Someone else wants to know if this one's the scalp massager. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it was the last one wasn't, so maybe this one is. <laughs> Protect, Protect your, head, your head. Or maybe it's something for the hair. Keeping birds from pecking at your head. Well, now that we know that birds can be nasty, that is definitely a fair guess. And anyone who's ever tangled with a goose needs mm -hmm. something. To protect themselves frankly i've heard in australia that the magpies can get pretty territorial oh. too so yeah oh man geese are just something else a wig <laughs> like the like the helmet uh covers what we have now okay all right A goose looking head to protect it from beaks. The thing that stops you from, uh, oh man, my Grammarly is covering up. What does it say? Oh, from turning your head. Yeah. Got it. All right. Light blockers so you can sleep, a comb. Okay. She's going to reveal the answer. All right. So this has a couple of things going on. So 1920, um, it was a hat that also combed your hair. Um, and that also cut your hair and the, <laughs> it did it in such a way that was very, very, very dangerous. It burned your hair. <laughs> so the inventor really felt that getting your hair cut in the exact way you want wasn't accessible to most people. So they invented, um, a hat that 
burned off your hair to the desired length and then combed it. <laughs> that would smell great. Wouldn't it? Yes. <laughs> if you've ever smelled burnt hair. Oh, man. I know. It would, like, last a lifetime just after some use. Um, oh. So, interestingly, this is why we, why we still cut hair with scissors today is because of this invention. Because they proved that this is not the way to go. <laughs> In case, in case you ever wondered, like, why have we not evolved beyond scissors? This is why. <laughs> the other options are not good. <laughs> Something very close to that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this one is going to be from 1922. What is it? Can you take half points for a hair designer? Sure. That's fine with me. I approve. <laughs> it did have something to do with hair. And the the last step was the design part. <laughs> so sure. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with the uh, person who said I think it's a like a robotic bug. Okay. All right, a robotic bug. Like a kid, someone else said a kid's toy. A bug invention to catch other bugs. A spy bug. I love these answers. A bird catcher to attract birds. Oh, because they would eat the bug. In theory, they would want to eat the bug. And so it would attract birds. Got it. Okay. What else? A spy bug. A bird feeder. There's a lot of like bird themes going on here, despite despite the fact that it looks like a bug. Like okay. a grasshopper, yeah. A tracking device. Yeah, it does. It looks like a grasshopper. All right. A robotic bug to deter real bugs. <laughs> come, come over here to this grasshopper and not by me. Okay, so this was for exercise. This was invented specifically for kids um, to get them running and jumping. It, it did indeed look like a grasshopper you put it on like a shoe um and yeah it was kind of uh it was bouncy so you could bounce around and it was it, yeah it was meant to get people uh to get kids specifically up and running and and bouncing so yeah yep, <laughs> something <it> mad does. <laughs> <laughs> i agree amy that does seem like something a mad scientist made yes <laughs> There were no suction cupped feet. In fact, it was it was the opposite because they wanted you to like bounce. Um, the only thing, and I know I referred to this a couple of times, but when I was a kid, there were like these moon shoes. Um, you put them on and it had like a little trampoline almost in the middle. Um, and you could bounce around like in these shoes. Uh, we need this now. <laughs> it's okay to have zero points. In fact, the people who don't have <laughs> zero points, I, maybe I didn't do a good enough job <laughs> uh, because these are, these are meant to be very, very hard and silly is the thing. This is not a test. Um, this is, this is silliness and ridiculousness that for some reason people in the government signed off on as, as being totally fine and safe and normal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> what is this thing? What do we think? I have seen these so many times now that I'm like, what what was even my first guess back back in the day for breathing? Okay. <laughs> vacuum. Okay. I could see that. Oh my gosh. They used to have vacuums, at least at my house. Not every house had this, but it was like a central vacuum where you plug it into mm -hmm. the wall. Um it does kind of look like that. A self-heater, a warming or cooling device. Okay. <laughs> what else? A clothes heater, <laughs> a vacuum for scratching yourself, <laughs> a device that blows air on your blanket so it doesn't lay on you. <laughs> for the people who don't like being touched by their blankets. A uh, portable air conditioner. When can we make our robot? Anytime. You can do your robot at any time. I'm actually not going to make one. Um, I'm just going through this. So you can be working on your robot at any moment and just like look up as we're as we're going through these. 
an air purifier for your body. Okay. So there were a few people um, who were who were correct, at least in part. Um, so this was a wearable refrigerator. Um, you could either wear it when you were walking around um, or you could wear it when you were sleeping. So it was to help regulate body temperature um, for those people who get hot. I know when I sleep, I very easily get overheated. So I probably would have been a user, although by the by the looks, it looks loud. I don't know. And as I mentioned before, I'm a very light sleeper, so maybe not. Um <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so it's actually, to keep ev everything off that burn that you've suffered from the <laughs> from the hat. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. No, yeah, I think that uh, we actually had some people that were not too far off. Yeah, no, they totally, totally weren't. <laughs> All right, what what might this one be? All right, if someone guesses this, you've won the whole thing. Um, yeah. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> because this one is, I don't know. It's, I don't know that you can guess vague, it from. But it's also, it's, I said it's like vague, but it's also I like, know. obviously they put a lot of thought into it because there's a lot of annotations that is on a different page. That's <laughs> Right? Yes, there are a lot of figures, unlike most of the other ones. Um, and yet, like you said, it is, it is also vague at the same time. I feel like it has to do with like it's like a you can automatically put candle out maybe. Okay. Like it, it looks like there's a candle on there perhaps. Okay. A clock. Someone says they someone says they know. All right, a strap tunnel pulley invention, a toy. What other guesses? I like the candle one. That was not something that I had thought of or anybody else had in the other classes. <laughs> and given the years that we're talking about, candles, you know, very common. Um, a dashboard. Okay. I don't remember exactly what year this is, but remember we're in like the early 1900s. <laughs> An early tool. Okay. Well, we're not talking like caveman days. We need somewhere between... <laughs> Like a Tesla dashboard, <laughs> like and and early hand tools. <laughs> uh, yeah, candle. I I agree. Like you and Amelia, I think that that is a really good guess that I did not think of when I first did this postage collection. All right, I'm gonna tell you. Like I said, if you guys had gotten this, I mean, I would be using the the saluting hat uh, to you. <laughs> so this. This is the weirdest thing ever. So 1949, it was for people who didn't want to waste gum. Um, so they would chew it and then store it in this box and use it later. The gum. I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, I, I truly, I have like no words. Like why, why would you do this? Why did someone think oh. the world needed this? <laughs> and it was originally made out of cardboard, which I feel makes it worse. Um, it was eventually, um, you know, evolved beyond that. But that thing in the middle was um, was metal um, to put the actual gum on. And then the cardboard would, like, come up around it. I feel like this wouldn't work. Um, yeah, I, I know. Right, you? <laughs> I know, right? I don't know what's happening. I don't know why anyone would want this. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I've I've got nothing for that one, but that's what it was. It was for storing your used gum so you could then, again, use it at a later date and time. Totally wild. All right. What is the next one? Okay. Here we go. What do we think this one is? Super duper yucky. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't, I love the faces. I haven't chewed gum in a really long time, like since I was a kid. And I don't, even as a child, I'm not, I'm not sure that that like would have crossed my mind. <laughs> it's like something necessary in life. <laughs> Maybe that's why they were sick so much. That is fair. <laughs> okay, they were using so all their sense. old chewing gum. <laughs> all right. What do you think this one is? It looks like something that lifts someone uh, like out of a bed, perhaps. 
Okay. A pillow adjuster. A fake dentist. <laughs> I feel like a lot of these inventions like would require a dentist afterward. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like biting yeah. down on that thing and now chewing the presumably very hard gum, a light alarm, an anesthesia tool. What else? A pillow adjuster. Any other guesses? All right. In the, oh my gosh, we're almost. Is that spray, spray water? Spray. <laughs> All right. So this one is also related to snoring. So essentially, um, here, let me, let me open the, this back up. So this is a microphone and it would pick up on snoring. And once it reached a certain level, it would adjust your pillow. So you would stop snoring. Now this to me is actually kind of cool. Like the things that they have now, um, that like go over your face and everything seem really barbaric. Um, my dad has one. <laughs> I wish my husband would get one. <laughs> um, this seems better to me, uh, you know, adjusting the pillow and whatnot. Uh, but alas, it does no, it no longer exists, but that is what this is. Microphone that can hear how loud you snore. Yeah. <laughs> you got in right before I said it. <laughs> well, there you go. There you have it. Yeah, we're not, we're, we're going to go over the hour. I don't know how, if anyone's cool with that, but um, what do we think this one is? A uh, raincoat for a dog. That would be the obvious answer. <laughs> 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 Which means it is not a raincoat for a dog. <laughs> That was definitely my, I, I actually didn't use this one in my presentations last summer. This was a new one um, that I stumbled across um, when I was looking up the actual patent numbers today. And uh, I was like, oh, well, I can't pass up on this one, especially since it's not a raincoat for a dog. <laughs> <laughs> they said, uh, Elizabeth says something to protect the dog from getting scratched. Someone okay. Else is like a dog or jacket. Super, Super dog. dog. <laughs> I like that one. That one should win. <laughs> to prevent dog injuries. A sweater for a dog. Okay. My dog loved wearing clothes. Um, she <laughs> lab coat. <laughs> Maybe the dogs are coming up with all these patents and that's why they're so weird. <laughs> as pet as super, pet super dog, dog. <laughs> it kind of looks like that, it though. does right these are all like completely <laughs> valid guesses as to what this might be well oh. look it has a little smile and everything so you know i know right <laughs> <laughs> I like that it's detail. happy about whatever's happening here all right prepare yourselves <laughs> this was a dust cover now i told my <laughs> husband about this today and he's like do dogs get dusty <laughs> Apparently they do. Um, so I don't know why they called it that. Um, that's that's actually what the patent is called, dust cover for a dog. Um, but it actually was meant for helping you get rid of fleas. Um, I don't know if anyone here has ever had to apply like um, the um, the like flea stuff to their dog. Um, like either between the shoulders or like all the way down their back, depending on the kind um not fun um so whatever method they were using at the time to help prevent fleas and other pests they would put their dog in this thing first and then um let me go back to the picture and then put through this hole they would they would put the um the pest control for lack of a better word i'm, I'm sure it's <laughs> sure it wasn't called pest control um through there and that way it was applied to the entire dog and then of course allowed them to still breathe um so that is that is what that is i do not know why they called it a dust cover that feels that feels misleading at best so that was from 1964. Um, we're starting to get into some really recent ones which to me is is more shocking than anything else <laughs> this is from what this is, is from 1972 world? And I feel like <laughs> I I feel like they needed more explanation than this picture. I know, right? 
<laughs> the original picture from my class was in color. Mm -hmm. I, I was able to find a, a black and white one. Obviously, that's what the actual patents office has is black and white. The color one is downright frightening. Um, I don't I don't know why, but like if you add color to this, it's way creepier. Um, a weight loss suit. Yeah, like a, like a personal sauna or something. <laughs> Actually, I could see that. Yeah. And, but then you don't have the like sweaty head. I don't mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of sweating like on my face. So uh, sick bed, tank radar software, a, a bath suit. All right. Shower suit, sleeping bag for the wall. <laughs> Just like hang yourself up. Yeah. At night. <laughs> well, this almost looks like it could be a trampoline. Maybe you jumped up onto the hook. All right. An astronaut bed. Stand up if you don't have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's some funny answers. I just promise bed. funny okay. answers. So. Okay, astronaut bed actually isn't, that does actually look similar to what the, the, the kind of beds that they do in the International Space Station, so. Why, why is this so thin? Like, I question this yeah. woman's health, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like that's part of the creepiness in this. Mm -hmm. It looks like, um, like a juice box, but like the bag version mm -hmm. um, like with a, a woman's head sticking out of it. It's just, <laughs> Were super creepy for me. Um, all right. So there were actually some correct people for this one. This was a bath. This was a portable bath um, because apparently in 1972, which again, just for me at least feels, feels somewhat recent. Um, there were just not a lot of hotels that had quality baths. And so you could fold this up, which is what was happening um, on this side. You could oh. up and bring it with you and always have a reliable bath. I'm sorry. I keep switching back and forth, but this is how you fill it um, and drain it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And you zip yourself up. You like climb in, zip yourself up and like, I don't know, shake it all around. I have no idea. Like somehow like you, that was a method of, oh, well, your arms are in there, I guess. Oh, mm -hmm. super creepy. I mean, Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I've actually seen like improved versions of these for camping. There have been so many, so many portable baths that were all failures. But um, but this was not an uncommon invention. They obviously did it. <laughs> Barbie juice. Yeah, right. That's what it looks like. <laughs> That was absolutely what I walked away um, from. If you get a chance to after this class, and if you have the desire, obviously, look up the color version. I'm telling you. <sighs> Thousand times creepier. All right. What is this? Oh, my. <laughs> oh. I want to say, like, it's for, like, like, placement of your doggy dog's ears like making it like so that they're like certain like they're pla like placed or maybe like you could I mean like with how crazy the other things are it could be anything from like <laughs> so like for dog you know, shows that has to be like in a perfect spot or something mm -hmm. okay yeah or like hair drying of some kind yeah for dog yeah like somebody said drying. a dog blow dryer yeah <laughs> dog armor okay like yeah because I mean there's more going on here than just the sides there's yeah, there's like straps and stuff. A, a toy. Okay. Yeah. Dog hair trimmer. Earmuffs so they can't hear and bark. A toy. A hair bow. All incorrect, by the way. Yeah. This one's this one's pretty weird. So looking at it to me, I would have thought that this is like to protect their hearing if it was mm -hmm. louder, kind of like the chicken thing. Um, but you know how dogs once, at least certain breeds, once one starts barking, like they're all barking now. Mm -hmm. um, and not that. Um, this is so you could take your dog to a restaurant with you and they wouldn't get their ears in your food. <laughs> Which feels like really very specific. specific. <laughs> they like had a dog that just like kept doing that. Like, like at some point you got to realize like this is your dog doing this on purpose because it knows that you don't like that. Like if you have a poodle, I'm telling you they're smart enough. They know what they're doing. 
I've never had a poodle, but as someone who had a very smart dog, I will take your word for that. This was from 1980. And for the very specific use of taking your dog to a restaurant and preventing them from getting their ear hair in your food. I, I mean, this must have been a very, very, very big problem for the person who invented <laughs> this. I don't know. Yes, like, this this must have happened so often that they're like, you know what? And by the Other way, people must have this problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I should say too, is applying for a patent like is not free. And it is not easy. It is actually a very expensive and time-consuming process. So that problem must have been so much for this person that they, oh, they're, they're like, I'm willing to spend the money. I'm willing to take the time because this <laughs> needs to be done. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. So next up, what do we have here? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> oh, what is it? I like how there's like pointing to different things with numbers like yeah it's going to make sense when you read it you know I know yeah and obviously in the full patent it'll explain what each one does but yeah it's it's a box with the tongue yeah that's that was a little <laughs> button that, that's, that's... that sticks out the tongue <laughs> all right so what is what is the tongue's purpose then <laughs> like what is this tongue doing? The only thing that I can possibly guess is it's supposed to be like some sort of automatic taster. So like you put something on it and it's supposed to like tell you what it tastes like or like give a read mm. what's in it. Oh, I like that. I was just talking to, I'd, I had a class earlier. I was just talking to a student about how I cannot stand spicy stuff. Like for whatever reason, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm what they call like a super taster or something. Like all of my taste buds are very sensitive. So mm -hmm. I could have used, you know what, that would be, that would be worth it for me. Um, I'm also like allergic to half the world. So if I, if I put yeah. something on like a taster, oh, and like, what about like Kings and stuff that used to get like, you know, I mean, that would have been useful to like weed out all of that. <laughs> a piggy bank. We're going to go much more simple piggy bank. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. That's actually clever. I know. I like that too. A vending machine. <laughs> a tongue cleaner. Okay. <laughs> uh, you put food on it when you don't want to eat it. <laughs> and your box eats it instead. Okay. Um, so this actually is a very simple one. Although perhaps one that today's young people would not be familiar with. Um, so this is for licking stamps <laughs> and envelopes. So uh, again, uh, all right. So now you just like wet a sponge or whatever, if it's mm. not something that automatically comes with, with sticker, like we already have like stamps. Uh, do they even make like ones where you lick them anymore? I feel like they don't. Um, at, but envelopes they do. We refuse to use them, <laughs> but that is what this was used for. So it, uh, the tongue was normally on the, <laughs> on the inside. Um, and that's where it was wet. You push this button, the tongue would come out and you could rub your stamp and or envelope across it in order to, to close it. That's a good one. <laughs> that all one's right. just weird. <laughs> I, they're all just weird. That's, that's definitely, definitely the point. <laughs> all right. I cannot wait to hear what people have to say about this one. This one makes my top five as well. So. Yeah, I I don't even, <laughs> I don't even know. Man. <laughs> this one makes my top five. I cannot wait to hear what other people think though is happening in this picture. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's just like mass silence about what, horrible thing this could possibly be we're just all like um no <laughs> i was waiting for the toilet siphon i rest assured this is not a toilet siphon <laughs> i just had to wait for someone to say it it is not a siphon for your toilet so this is not not for unclogging your toilet with your mouth do not worry nope thank goodness nope. <laughs> not even weird inventors thought that that was a good idea. So rest assured, a toilet straw. 
to clean the toilet without smelling the dirty air from the toilet. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> so the one benefit of like masks being a normal thing now, I feel is like the public bathroom experience. Um, so I know we're over already and I still have a few more to go. Um, all right. Uh, I went ahead and shared with everyone the coupon code that you can use to get Heather's um, inventor opinion writing resource 15% uh, off. It's only going to be available for the next 24 hours, but I want to make sure everyone has access to that uh, because if you're enjoying this, you are going to enjoy your other inventor resources. Yes, exactly. Thank you for sharing that. Um, drink water when you don't have water. Oh, you know, that, that would be really good. Um, so no, <laughs> um, this is so back in the day. Um, and I don't think that this is for the most part a thing anymore. They used to have restaurants that were very smoky. Um, Ooh. and so if you needed a break at a restaurant, you could use this invention to go and breathe clean air through the restroom at the restroom toilets. <laughs> now, <laughs> again, I'm like, how often is, is like, this specific thing needed. Um, I mean, I didn't like the smoky restaurants either. I would not go to the bathroom and stick a tube in the toilet to like escape it. I just, I would sooner walk out of the restaurant rather than the toilet tube. Um, but that's, that's what this is. Now you can see from the picture that it actually isn't in the water. Um, mm -hmm. now mind you, it had to go, it kind of had to go through the water first. So, you know, um, but the end, <laughs> once it, once it went through the water and made it out the other side, it is air and supposedly, uh, fresh air, fresher than the restaurant, which I have all sorts of questions about, about that. <laughs> like if, if your restaurant is so awful, people are breathing through the toilets. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like it shouldn't be passing like health inspections. But that's just me. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So this is the last one from the 90s. And then and then we hit the last round, um, which goes up to 2006. The last one, I shouldn't say the last one from the 90s. There are others from the 90s, but the last one from this round. What do we think? I think it's some sort of like exercise tracker. Okay. All right. What else? And Perhaps a timer for it says increments. <laughs> so it's something that's done repetitively. And it's tracking how many? The secret gun <laughs> tracker. <laughs> <laughs> figure out when your gum is really going to go bad. Like not even this box can help it. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I do feel like if you thread enough of these together, you'd have a really great story. <laughs> <laughs> An early stopwatch or timer. A sprinkler timer. Oh, that's a good guess. That is a good guess. Yeah. We have one of those, and it's just as complicated as this, frankly. All right. So it is a watch, but it is it's a very special watch. <laughs> Tiny yes. scum timer. All right. Uh, timed water fountain. All right. So it is. This is interesting. So it actually would tell you your life expectancy. <laughs> I feel like this would really stress me out to be wearing this watch. So it, it actually was based on like actuarial tables and whatnot. You would, um, you would give it all sorts of information, like real information about your life. And as things changed, um, in your life, it would like update your life expectancy. I, this would, this would stress me out to no end. I have no idea why, why you would like, be like, well, <laughs> <laughs> 30 that, just days took left. Seven, <laughs> that just took seven years off. I know, right? Um, I, I I saw the gum box and now here we are. <laughs> <laughs> so it was meant to encourage you to, to avoid things like smelling out of or breathing out of the toilet and, and using gum boxes. Um, it was meant to extend your life. Although I don't know, I think it would give me like a lot of gray hairs. I, I feel like it would, it would most certainly 
It would most certainly kill me sooner rather than later. Um, okay, what about this one? This one to me, like, I feel like I would know what this is. Like, it feels a lot less complicated than a lot of the others. Um, I guess that's I, my hint. It's it's not simple. <laughs> it's like, I want to say that it's, like, simple. I want to say, like, shoe warmer. You know, like, you step down and it, like, charges it somehow. Like A shoe high heel. Okay. Maybe it, like, turns your shoe from, like, a regular sneaker to have, like, a heel. Oh, yeah. That would be super useful. I cannot stand heels. I, I, I don't know the anyone out there who does enjoy heels, but it would be great to, like, oh, I'm going into a meeting. Button. <laughs> and then go back to flats after that. that would yeah, be, exactly. That would be great, right? Oh, man. Someone get on that patent, please. <laughs> You would be rich beyond your wildest dreams. I would be the first in line to buy that. <laughs> so this person, Elizabeth said, a shoe that can detect things. Even uh, when you're not to, close to it. A shoe weapon to defeat enemies. <laughs> oh, like a James Bond type thing. You take off the shoe and like it has some sort of thing coming out of it. Yeah, I could see that. To dry out your shoes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's see what this is. Actually, Amelia, you were the closest. So uh, oh. gravity powered air conditioner. So, um, so yeah, it, essentially you could either cool down or heat up. Uh, they call this is all of the, I think I mentioned this earlier, but in quotes, this is the actual patent name. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm not just saying this, um, that's what it's actually called, but you could cool down or warm up your feet. Um, and it was all powered by, by gravity. So this is from 1994 while I was alive. The last couple have been, I was born in 84. So last couple have been, um, yeah, we finally got during my lifetime. <laughs> We're finally getting to, to my timeline. So Yes. <laughs> like, oh, man. No, oh, don't hit answer. <laughs> All right. Almost did it again. Okay. <laughs> All okay. Right. Now, clearly, this is a fork. Let's mm -hmm. get beyond that. It clearly is a fork that does something. What do we think it does? <laughs> I think that it's, like, similar to that other, like, the life counter or something like that. It actually uh, tells you, like, what's how good your food is for you. Like, if it's good or not. Mm. Yeah, maybe they work together. It like you're like, okay, well the fork says <laughs> the fork says this is fine. Let's see what the watch thinks. <laughs> Tells you to stop eating. It can turn into a spoon or a knife. Very useful. That would be great. Counts bites. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm waiting oh. for someone to say that like it's a another James Bond type type weapon. Yeah, there it yeah is. a weapon for to defeat enemies. <laughs> I pretty I get these delayed, so I feel like they typed this before I said it. I was just waiting for it. It, it felt it felt appropriate. <laughs> Marion at it again. Marion fam Marion's fa or Mar or someone at Marion's house. Portion, Portion control, control fork. fork. That's what I was thinking. Like something that told told you like how much. It's like, okay, stop eating now. Something like that. That is exactly what it is. All right. So it's kind of like oh, dual really? dual purpose. So um, I don't know if you've ever heard this before, but you're supposed to chew your food like a certain number of times um, before swallowing. And that mm -hmm. helps you with portion control. Um, it's, it's like a, I don't know, some sort of connection with your mouth and your mind. Um, and that's what this does. So it helps you from, uh, it helps you count the number of chews that you, um, that you do for each uh, mouthful of food. And in the end, um, you know, it stops you from eating too quickly and lets you enjoy the food a bit more. Um, so yeah, couple Ariel's comb. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Maybe it counted like the number of, of brush strokes she needed. <laughs> All right. What's the next one? Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. <laughs> Little pocket bird. <laughs> Just hook him up. Keep, keep him wherever you want. 
take it, take it wherever you want. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. What guesses do we have here? To teach, teach the bird flying lessons. Okay. All right. Yeah. Like the swimming lessons. <laughs> right. You're right. Yes. <laughs> exactly. That, but for birds. I like yeah. that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, the first time they fly, they basically fall. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just like, <laughs> here's hoping on the way down a bird machine to defeat other birds, a bird nappy or a diaper. All right. <laughs> Teach birds how to, oh man, my. Like water and swim like in water. it when they can't fly. Okay. All right. <laughs> Like a bird flotation device. <laughs> oh, right. So along the lines of the swimming thing where they can't drown and they can they can learn a bit more about it. This is definitely not a bird I would imagine being on the water. So it probably probably needs something like that. So one of you was correct. Um, this is a bird diaper <laughs> um, from 1999. Again, we're talking like recent at this point. Um, now, anyone who has ever had a pet bird, I, I have not, but I had friends growing up who had pet birds and they make so much mess. Um, <laughs> my, my daughter loves birds. She is, she's seven, but is counting down the days until she has her own house so she could have a thousand birds. And <laughs> They no longer make this, but I kind of hope they bring it back because I will never be visiting her house <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> so if this does not make some sort of miraculous um, comeback, we probably won't have an adult relationship. So <laughs> here's hoping. <laughs> All right. Second to last one. I think this one's from 2003, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Oh my. I, this is not one I presented before either, but I mean, when you look at it, you see it and you're like, well, obviously that has to make the list. Although I did think it was for the 500 points. So hopefully I don't have the same one twice in a row. Yeah. It, it's just got no answer on that one. <laughs> I, Dow cloths. Okay. Oh, I'm, I assume like Dow clothes, but okay. What else? <laughs> it's just so weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like it's watching me. <laughs> yeah. I think that what's funny is it's, it's an elephant, but it's got a little tiny elephant. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's yeah, it's just an elephant with an elephant. Uh, yeah, I know. Oh my gosh, we're so over, but people seem to be enjoying this nonetheless. All right, elephant clothes um, uh, to protect from poachers. <laughs> A knot on his nose because he broke it. <laughs> A connected <laughs> box worksheet. We're just going super simple. This isn't an invention at all. I can print this at home. Maybe it's like the, what do they call it? Like the dot markers. Mm -hmm. Um yeah for for like kindergarten like hand-eye coordination I assume that's what that's for protect from poachers okay <laughs> not even close to any of that um this was a Halloween costume so it was um so I grew up in Chicago and I, I have had plenty of Halloweens in my life that were in the snow um so this was meant to be temperature controlled Halloween costume, clearly in the shape of an elephant. Why they chose that, I, I do not know. I feel like elephant really is... The, feeling that elephant theme. Yeah, yeah it, a, a bold choice for Halloween. Um, <laughs> but but that, is, that is it. So it came in layers as well. Um, so you could, you could take off layers. It was waterproof on the outside. I mean, it covered, it covered all the bases. Um, just, but it yeah, was super strange. So... Um, so that was from 2005. And then and spent money on getting it patented. <laughs> I know, right? From 2005. I was already married by then. Okay. All right. Whew. I didn't do a double up. All right. Last one. Last one. And I okay. do apologize for keeping everyone so late. So my best guess is that it's something to try to make it to keep it from like uh spilling 
Like, so uh-huh. you have correct placement or something like that. Cup. <laughs> that's the best I got I feel like a lot of these inventions are judging me like <laughs> you know like yeah no, you totally. think I you think I need this because I'm I totally that. inept at life um <laughs> oh I don't God. think we got any guesses <laughs> I know they're just like what is this okay so we got one the thing to throw up in <laughs> Oh my god. Cup for your nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. What else? It's automatic, automatic drinking, drinking machine. machine. Well, we've had automatic other things that are unnecessary, so I can I could see that. Yeah. They do have things like that for like horses. Uh, mm-hmm. not it's not a machine, I think, but like the like a feed bag, right? So Right. So that, I think that's a fair guess. All right. I think to throw up in. Yeah, that's a popular guess. Something to throw up in. No, no, it is not. I am, I'm here to tell you. Um, this was for the treatment of hiccups. So you can't really, uh, I think the picture is kind of a weird one. All the other pictures did not help. So I chose this one. Um, but inside here, and you can see it coming out the side, um, was like a straw. So there was a straw inside of here. And supposedly this, um, this would help you um, by, yeah. Because, you know, we don't know the cause of hiccups even, let alone how to stop them. And I find like once I get hiccups in a day, it like, it just... I don't know. It keeps repeating itself until, until the next day. Um, but this helped you breathe in and out and stop your hiccups and keep them from at least coming back for a little while. So hiccup treatment device from 2006. I have certainly never seen one in life. So yeah, I would say that this was, this was trialed and not successful. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, how do you well, trial something like that, right. You have to be like, uh, here on the off chance that you get hiccups today. <laughs> I know, right? And it looked huge. It was like the size of your head. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine you just like throwing it in your purse or whatever. And yeah, like right. you said, in the off chance that you get hiccups at some point during the day. Um, so that is that, folks. I really, really, really hope you had a good time. I am so sorry that this went a little over. I wanted to give you guys enough time to guess. So again. Apologies for that. Apologies to you, Amelia, too, for going over. Um, I've gone no, under I'm for some fun. of the others, so <laughs> evens out. If you want to get the replay on this and you also want to check out some of our other fun classes, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm just putting a link in the description here. You will be able to get access to all of the past classes. And like I said, this one as well, as soon as the live is over. So thank you everyone for joining us today. And I hope you really enjoyed this class. Be sure to go and check out Heather's other resources when it comes to the inventors, because she has a lot of fun stuff on her website. I'm going to post the link to that again. And then go get making your robots. Yes. And tell me what they do, because I want to know what crazy things your robots do. So please come back to this, um, this post, the event and drop in what your robot does. Um, do you mind Amelia, if I also plug my next class real quick? Absolutely. Okay. So, um, you would have the date. I'm no good with days. Um, but in May I am doing this style class, but dinosaur trivia, um, I, one of my special skills in life is finding things that are not common knowledge. So I guarantee you, you will learn new things. Um, and everything you thought you knew was wrong. <laughs> so <laughs> that is something to look forward to in May. That's my next class. <laughs> yes, it's going to be on May 9th. So I'm going to actually go ahead and drop a link to that as well. So if you enjoyed this class, go over there and let us know that you're coming to the Dinosaur Trivia. <laughs> All right. I hear a tiny human running above me. So I have to run. (laughs) Thank you so much. Bye guys. Bye.